Hello, we are going to continue what we started about the measurement of the angle of strabismus. As we mentioned in the previous presentation, the test used to measure the angle of deviation includes objective tests such as the corneal reflex methods, the cover tests, and the subjective or the dissociative tests. In this presentation, we are going to discuss the subjective tests. The subjective tests include the dissimilar image tests and the dissimilar target tests. So what are dissociative tests? All dissociative tests are subjective tests. They are based on the patient perspective of two different images seen by both eyes. The more the horizontal division, the more the images will be widely displaced horizontally and the more the vertical deviation, the more the images will be widely displaced vertically. Dissociative tests are based on three physiological principles, which are the projection, the normal corresponding retinal points, and simultaneous perception. We will start with the simplest, which is projection. Normally an image falling on the retina is inverted. So an image falling on the left side of the retina, the brain will assume that the object is on its right side. If the image falls on the right side of the retina, the brain will assume that the object is on the left side. And if it falls on the fovea, the brain will assume that the object is directly in front of it. Dissociative tests are based on that principle. If the eye is straight or orthophoric, the image of the target will fall in the fovea and the brain will correctly interpret it as if it is present in front of it. If the left eye is isotropic, the image will fall on the nasal retina and so the brain will falsely think that the object is in the temporal field. If the left eye is exotropic, the image will fall on the temporal retina and so the brain will falsely think that the object is on the nasal field. The second principle depends on the presence of the corresponding retinal points in both eyes. Normally the image falls on the retina of both eyes. The image would fall so that the head of the snake, for example, would fall on a point on the temporal retina of the right eye and a point on the nasal retina of the left eye, while the image of the tail of the snake would fall on a point on the nasal retina of the right eye and a point on a temporal retina of the left eye. These points are called corresponding retinal points. Each point on the retina of one eye has a corresponding point on the retina of the other eye, which receives exactly the same image. In clinical practice, the most important corresponding retinal points are the foveas of both eyes. Normally, the image that falls on the fovea of one eye would fall on the fovea of the other eye, which makes them corresponding retinal points. The last principle is simultaneous perception. Simultaneous perception refers to the ability of the brain to perceive the image of both corresponding retinal points at the same time. So, for example, if the image of the cage falls on the fovea of the right eye and the image of the bird falls on the fovea of the left eye at the same time, simultaneous perception refers to the ability of the brain to perceive both the bird and the cage at the same time. And if the images fell on the fovea of both eyes, the brain will not only perceive them at the same time, but as the images fell on two corresponding retinal points which are the foveas, the brain will project them both to the same location and will see the bird inside the cage. All dissociative tests have essentially the same principle. We dissociate the two eyes by ensuring that each eye sees only one target or one image. If the patient has no misalignment, the target will fall on the fovea of each eye and the brain will feel that the two images are superimposed. If the patient has misalignment of one eye, the image of the left eye won't fall on the fovea. 
Hence, the patient will perceive that the bird is outside the cage. Or in other words, the two images are not superimposed. If the misalignment is small, the displacement of the two images will be small. On the other hand, if the misalignment is large, the displacement of the two images will be larger. There are two types of dissociative tests. In the dissimilar image test, the same object or target is presented to both eyes, but a filter or barrier is used to ensure that each eye receives a different image from the same object. In the dissimilar target tests, two different objects are placed before each eye. The dissimilar image tests include the Maddox rod and the Maddox wing tests. Both depend on the patient's perception to double vision introduced by converting the isolated object of regard into two separate images, one on each retina. The Maddox rod is composed of multiple cylindrical rods placed side by side. The rods convert a white or a yellow spot of light into a red line of light. This line is perpendicular to the axis of the rods. So if you place the Maddox rod with the rods arranged horizontally in front of the eye of the patient, the patient will see a vertical red line. And if you place the Maddox rod with the rods arranged vertically, the patient will see a horizontal line. In order to test for horizontal fourier, Maddox rod is placed horizontally in front of one eye. If the patient has straight eyes, the image of the spot of light will fall on the fovea of the right eye. On the left side, the Maddox rod will convert the spot of light into a vertical red line that will also fall on the fovea. So the patient will see a spot of light in the middle of the vertical red line. If the patient has esotropy, however, the red line will fall on the nasal retina, so the patient will assume that the red line is to the left side of the spot of light. This is known as the uncrossed diplopia simply because the red line was seen on the side where the matrix rod is placed, that is to the left side. On the other hand, if the patient has exotropia, the red line will fall on the temporal retina, and hence the patient will assume it is nasal to the spot of light. This is known as cross diplopia, as the red line is on the side without the matrix rod, while the spot of light is on the side of the matrix rod. In vertical fourier, the Maddox rod is placed vertically in front of one eye. If the patient has no vertical imbalance, the patient will see the spot of light in the middle of the red line. If the patient has hyper or hyperphoria, the patient will see the spot of light above or below the red line. If the patient has horizontal or vertical phorias, successively increasing prisms are placed in front of one eye until the patient sees a spot of light in the middle of the red line. Maddox rods are used to measure the fourier only for distance. Maddox rods can also be used to measure the cyclodiffusion. For doing that, double Maddox rod is used. A red Maddox rod is placed before one eye and a green or a white Maddox rod is placed before the other eye. The Maddox rods are placed horizontally on both eyes. If there is no cyclotorsion, the patient will see a red and a green vertical line that are parallel to each other. If there is an extortion of the right eye, the patient will see the red line intorted. The patient is asked to rotate the red matrix rod in the trial frame until the two lines are parallel to each other. 
the amount of rotation is equal to the cyclotorsion. On the other hand, if the right eye is intorted, the patient will see the red line extorted. The patient will be asked to rotate the red magic rod clockwise until the two lines are parallel to each other. While the magic rod is a useful subjective test for Fourier, it cannot differentiate a Fourier from Tropia. In addition, it requires central fixation, therefore it cannot be used in eccentric fixation or in blind eyes. The other test is the magic swing that is used mainly to detect the Fourier for near. The Maddox swing consists of a horizontal and a vertical scale and two arrows, a white arrow and a red arrow. Dissociation of the two eyes is done so that the right eye sees only a vertical white arrow and a horizontal red arrow. While the left eye sees a horizontal scale of numbers, and the vertical scale of numbers. The scale is done in a smart way so that on the horizontal scale, exophoria scale is written in even numbers while isophoria scale is written in odd numbers. So whenever the patient reports that the white arrow is pointing to an even number, this indicates that he has an exophoria, while if the arrow points to an odd number, this means that he has an isophoria. Similarly, the vertical scale is arranged so that even numbers indicate a left hyperphoria, while odd numbers indicate a right hyperphoria. If the patient is orthophoric, the tip of the white arrow would fall on a point on the retina on one eye, while the zero mark on the horizontal scale would fall on its corresponding point on the retina of the other eye. So the patient will see that the tip of the arrow is at the zero mark. Similarly, the tip of the red arrow would fall on a point on the retina on one eye, and the zero mark of the vertical scale would fall on its corresponding retinal point on the other eye. So if the patient does not have vertical imbalance, the patient will see that the tip of the red arrow is on the zero mark. In addition, if the patient has in cyclotorsion or ex cyclotorsion, the patient will see that the red arrow is not parallel to the horizontal scale, instead it will point to the degree of the cyclophoria. In contrast to the matrix rod, which measures the heterophoria for distance, matrix swing measures the heterophoria for near. The other group of dissociative tests are the dissimilar target tests, which include the head screen, and similar screens such as the Lancaster Red Green and the Lit Green, as well as the Major Ambuloscope or the Synopto 4. The Major Ambuloscope consists of two tubes. At the end of each tube, a photo or a picture can be placed so that it is seen by the eye looking through this tube only. The two tubes can be moved horizontally or vertically. So as in any dissociative test, Two different targets are presented, one to each eye. The two eyes are completely dissociated so that each eye sees only one target. If the patient has no misalignment, the image will fall on the fovea of each eye, so the patient will think that the two images are superimposed. If the patient has misalignment of one eye, the image of the left eye won't fall on the fovea. Hence, the patient will perceive that the bird is outside the cage, or in other words, the two images are not superimposed. So how can we make use of this to measure the angle of deviation? The sign up to 4 can be used to measure both the objective angle of deviation, which is the actual deviation of the eyes in degrees, and the subjective angle, which is the patient's perception of the displacement of the two images. The subjective angle can simply be measured by asking the patient to move the tube or the target until it falls on the fovea, and thus the patient will see the two images superimposed. The amount of rotation is the patient perception of the displacement of the images, or what we call the subjective angle. 
The objective angle is different and is quite similar to that used in PRISM and cover tests. The Synaptor 4 has an option to shut down the light from one tube. So if we shut down the light from the fixing eye, the patient will move the deviating eye to regain fixation. The larger the diffusion, the more the movement. Now the procedure is repeated after moving the tube so that the image of the bird is in front of the deviating eye. Now this time, when you shut off the light from the fixing eye, the deviating eye won't move as the image of the bird is now opposite to the fixation. The amount of rotation needed until the deviating eye stops to move is the objective angle of deviation. The head screen and the Lancaster Red Green test are quite similar. The dissociation of the two eyes is done by placing a red filter in front of the right eye and a green filter in front of the left eye. The patient is shown a red target on the screen. The patient himself is holding a torch of green light. The patient is asked to place his green light on the red target on the screen. The test is first done in the primary position of gaze. The test is then repeated at different positions of gaze by asking the patient to look at the red target with his eyes while ensuring no movement of his head. And thus the alignment is tested in different positions of gaze. So in order to understand head screen, we need to go into the patient brain to see what happens chronologically. At first, the red dot is projected on the screen and the patient is asked to look at it. The red spot is only seen with the right eye, which is the eye with the red filter. The left eye, which has the green filter, cannot see the red light. The patient is then asked to look at the green dot that he is projecting on the screen from his torch. The green dot is only seen by the eye which has a green filter, which is the left eye, but not the right eye. If the patient has exotropia, the green dot will fall on the temporal retina of the left eye, so the patient will think that the green dot is on the nasal field or nasal to the red dot, which is in front of him. The patient is asked to move the green dot to be exactly on the red dot. The brain would think, the red dot is on the macula of the right eye, so I'm going to move the green light until it is on the macula of the left eye. If the green dot is on the macula of the left eye, then this means that both points are over each other. So the patient will move the green light temporarily until it is opposite the fovea. It is as if the patient moves the light to the point where the eye is directed. So if the eye is diversion, he will move the green light out. If the eye is conversion, he will move the green light in. If the left eye is hypertropic, he will move the green light up. And if the left eye is hypertropic, he will move the green light down. Not only that, but the more the angle of deviation, the farther away he will move the green light. The test is repeated again after exchanging the red and green filters to test the position of the right eye when the left eye is fixing. The patient's responses are then plotted on a piece of paper. Each one square displacement from the original spot indicates about 7 degrees of 15 prism diopter deviation. Thank you.